On his latest movie, Harlem Nights, uh, Eddie Murphy did everything except develop the film. Uh, he'll come out and talk to us about it. Uh, but first, let's look at a sample of his handiwork. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Vera, don't you want to talk about that? I ain't got nothing to say. You done insulted me, and I got to kick your ass right now. And afterwards, I don't want no hard feelings either. <laughs> what the f is wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. What the f is wrong with you? You done accused me of stealing. The only thing I'm stealing out here today is your face. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, sucker. Let's get it on. I mean, this is a big movie for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little afraid, yes. <laughs> How was it, Direct? <laughs> don't start, okay, don't start. <laughs> How was it, Direct? It was fun. Now, I mean, was it, will you do it again? I mean, did you bite off more than you could chew? We talked about that last Oh, week. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, for those honest. of you who are sitting at home wondering why we're laughing, he's come out and he's giving me one-word answers like the worst guests do, okay? <laughs> and he's going to try to give me a hard time. But I'm going to keep asking you questions. You know what the next question is going to be? No, no, no. Oh, okay, no. okay. So, <laughs> maybe you'll answer that first one. No. <laughs> what was it like directing, man? Uh... It was, it was, uh, it wasn't as much fun as I thought it was going to be. And, uh, because there's a lot of stuff that they ask you like that, you're like, do you want this cushion like this or like this? And you're like, I don't care about the cushion. <laughs> but I don't like stuff like that. But I might do it. Depends on how successful a movie is. If the movie comes out and it's successful and people are going, oh, it's wonderful, I'll direct it again. If they go, ha, that was garbage, I'll never do it again. <laughs> how did you feel, though, when you watched the I finished the product? Movie, but, if, you know, if you do something for nine months, Nine months, you're gonna say, I like it. You don't want to do nine months ago, like, this ain't quite right. <laughs> but I like the movie a lot, and everybody that's seen the movie, we'd screen it to uh, people, and they watch it, and they like it, so. And y'all like it too, I think it's a. It's a good... um, I saw the F word used there a couple times, and considering that Red Fox and Richard Pryor are also in it. And I you. Guess, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess that F word was used oh, a lot. Oh, yes, we wore the F word out. <laughs> That's what we almost called the movie. <laughs> F word nights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Richard Pryor's an idol of yours. Uh, yeah. How was it directing him? It was, uh, I love Richard a lot. And, uh, and it was, um, And I think a lot of, of, of what I am has to, is just because uh, I, I grew up admiring the man so much and it, was, it, blew my, it blew me away to just be on the set with him because I've been wanting to do a film with him since, uh, since I started doing films. Mm -hmm. And I would go and say, hey Richard, I, want, I got this idea for a movie. And he'd go, yeah. <laughs> and after a while I gave him this idea and he liked it and we did it and uh, it's just something I've been working up to for a long time and I'm real happy that he did it. And he came off real good in the picture, mm -hmm. real good. Where did you get the idea for Harlem Nights? 
um, my accountant came to me and he said, you know, you almost have no more money left. <laughs> and I said, I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> we doing this next week. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, that really happened. No. <laughs> what happened was uh, I wanted to do a picture about Harlem and, about, and I wanted to do a period movie and uh, that's how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember your first movie? Oh, no. Yeah, I remember in 48 hours. No, I'm thinking the no, one that was done that. in Miss Gay's yard. The Bruce Lee movie. Oh, who told you about that? <laughs> <laughs> With Fruity and I played Bruce Lee. What happened was, uh, <laughs> we saw Chinese Connection and we were very, uh, you know, when you see those karate movies when you're a kid, we went yeah. home and cut out my mother's broomstick up and got a chain and had noon chucks yeah. and all that. And I took it to the next step. I was like, let's do it over again. So we got a super eight millimeter. <laughs> you don't have that here, nothing like that, do you? Good, because if you shoot that clip, Roll I'll let clip up. No. no I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and we went in the backyard and we shot, uh, we shot uh, about 10 minutes of Chinese Connection with an all black cast. <laughs> We had to close down production, though, because we only had $15. <laughs> what was it called? It was called the Chinese Connection again. <laughs> we'll be right back with more anyway. <laughs> you going to be the nine-toe having this limping... <laughs> keep rolling, keep rolling. No rolling. <laughs> I got it. You ain't got no book. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to stick your ass. And I'm going to stick his ass. And I'm definitely going to stick this little janky ass bad. Sam, what the, what, breaking my neck, man. Good, let me go home. hate most about show business? I don't hate anything about show business. I don't hate it. I love what I do and I love this business. I love it all. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be somewhere like this. Pull the car up! <laughs> <laughs> you want car bone to wax with that? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, very much. <laughs> when you're in the position that you <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the... <laughs> what time Tony do? <laughs> time for my break, man. <laughs> I got to go to dentist. <laughs> my tooth come out again. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Are you ever going to do stand up again? You miss stand up? Um. You know, sometimes I want to do stand-up and I go to the club and I see so many, I see a lot of comedians and um, they're so good, it makes me afraid. Like, it's kind of, it's kind of here, brother out there now, I know it's laugh. There's a comedian named Damon Wayans who, uh... Mm -hmm. Damon's see, funny, man. Damon is funny. Very funny. And I want to do comedy, I want to get, you get that bug in you to go do stand-up, but then you go down to the comedy club and you see somebody like Damon doing comedy and you say, I don't think I want to touch the mic again, because <laughs> it's so funny, you know, so... Uh, I don't know, so one day, maybe, eventually. Right now, I got some other stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody on my staff asked me this, and I never thought about it. They said, Eddie is at the top of his field. Who does Eddie go for advice to? Who, who does Eddie go to for advice when he has problems? Do you have somebody you can talk to when you have problems, even on a personal level? Just you. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> I'm not getting quite the answers I was hoping I'd get tonight. But no, you know, when there was somebody answer. coming and asked me for some advice, I tell, I tell them, uh, don't take nobody's advice. <laughs> you know? Because a weird thing happened once. I worked out at a comedy club uh, when I was like 16. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say the club's name, but the woman that owned the club, she was like, oh, your act is terrible and you need to change it and you're, you're never going to go anywhere. And like five, six years later, I met her daughter. And she was like, can you give me some advice? I want to be an actress. I was like, don't listen to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't take, I don't give advice and I don't take advice because everybody's got a different path that they're going down, you know? And you can tell somebody, make sure you go left. And on their path, it's just supposed to go right. And they wind up like this. Bring the car forward. <laughs> <laughs> What's that Tony do? <laughs> My tooth come out. <laughs> As many times as we've talked on television and um, had interview situations, I've never asked you about Elvis. What you want to know? <laughs> when did that all start? When did the whole <laughs> love for Elvis begin? He teases me about Elvis all the time. <laughs> but and never says, on the air. Never no, but he <laughs> says, like, <laughs> if Elvis was alive now, oh, he said, no. man, you wouldn't even hang out with Elvis. <laughs> I said, yes, I wish it, man. Elvis would be in the lobby of your house, like, so you was there? <laughs> and I'll be in the room. Tell him I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? He told me to come over. <laughs> oh, I know what's going on. All right. But I, when I was a kid, see Elvis Presley to me. I just, it's, it's his presence. I think it is. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone in this business has had as much presence as Elvis. I don't think anyone's had as strong a presence. I think I think there have been entertain I think Michael Jackson is the only entertainer who's ever been more famous than him. But I think Elvis has uh, more presence. Like when Elvis walked in the room, everybody just looked at Elvis. You know, when he's on the screen, you looked at Elvis. He just had this thing about him. And he was going through all this stuff with drugs and all this craziness. But on screen and on stage, he always looked like he was in control. You know, mm -hmm. and that's amazing because it was this war going on inside this guy. And I'm just fascinated with him. You know, do you see similarities in Elvis and Eddie Murphy? None whatsoever. Really? Well, it started off, Elvis is very white. <laughs> and I'm very black. <laughs> Elvis is from Memphis, and I've never been to Memphis. And had I gone back then, they probably would have... <laughs> Elvis, Elvis! <laughs> so I don't, I don't see any similarities. I just admire his presence, you know? We had Herbie Hancock here last night who did the music for Harlem Nights, and he talked about what great instinct you have uh, musically. And... Uh... He talked about what a joy it was working with you and everything. He said that about my music? Well, no, he said when he was you working... You see that bill? There's a billboard for my uh, album on Sunset, <laughs> and somebody threw some snot-like something on it. <laughs> I was in a good mood. I was coming here. I said, is that snot on my head? <laughs> what is that? It's up there. They tried to hit me on the face. I guess yeah. he bought the album, thought it was a comedy record or something, <laughs> and heard me on top of oh, <laughs> I'm going to go throw snot on that picture. <laughs> It landed right, and it's a sad picture because the name of the album is So Happy, and it's a picture of me that looked very sad on the album. And he threw this snot on my head, and the snot's dripping down. I'm like, like I knew that snot would wind up on that picture, you know. The expression, the exact expression you would have if some snot was running down your head. <laughs> Herbie was talking mostly about how right on your instincts were as far as putting mu music to the movie. But uh, I, I was going to ask you about, about the album. How's it going and what's the next single coming off of it? Uh, I don't know what the next single is. And, uh, and the album is going... <laughs> no, but I like, the album's you know, doing well. The album's man. doing all right. It's not doing as well as Chunky's album. <laughs> 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 your brother Chunky! <laughs> No, your album's doing very well. No, it's doing all right. Yeah. He's got a, Chunky has a song on this album called Stink Breath. <laughs> <laughs> Listen for that one, because that's my favorite song on the album. But my album's doing all right. And the next single, I think, is uh, I Got It, written by... Uh, oh, yeah, the one who uh, worked with us on Coming to America. Now Rogers. Yeah. That's, a, that's a bad cut. Mm-hmm. Yo. <laughs> yo. That's his, ooh. Yo, man, I can't wait till it come out. Oh. <laughs> We'll be right back. We're going to take a commercial. We're going to take a commercial. We'll be right back.
<laughs> Your band don't know that song, do they? No, don't, don't you play a note of it. <laughs> We're gonna play party all the time. to present to Eddie, and I'll let Michael tell you the rest. Present it to the king of comedy, Eddie Murphy, the greatest comedian of all time, the king. Yeah. This is a, this is an award that MTV has actually uh, put together and viewers. Thank you, viewers. Thank you, the viewers voted. That's y'all. Thank, Thank you for giving me this. We, we have something we got to give you. This, oh, wait, one minute. Just oh, wait right there. Michael Award. Wait, go get it. Well, stay with Michael. Don't leave. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll stay here with Michael. MTV sent this over. I don't know if you know about this, viewers, but. The viewers. Uh, award for Michael Jackson for the greatest video in the history of all videos thrilling. That's Meg Ryan, When Harry Met Sally, coming December 14th to video stores everywhere. Is 20 minutes too long to wait for the slow-cooked taste of long grain rice? It is now. This is Minute Premium, a different kind of rice for minute. Slow-cooked taste in five fast minutes. Minute Premium long grain rice. Fuji videotape. Its only limitation is... <laughs> Fuji videotape is... <laughs> uh, Fuji! Fuji videotape. Its only limitation is... is so very... Different. It doesn't feel like ordinary lotion. It's concentrated. Carrie is so very... Recommended by many dermatologists. So I'll pay more for Carrie. Carrie is so very... Some coughs don't travel alone. They come with nasal and chest congestion and sore throat pain. So you need new cough formula Comtrex. It relieves your cough and those symptoms that make you feel worse. New cough formula Comtrex. Quiet your cough and then some. Got a cold? Uh -oh. Gotta get Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. It works. It's fast. <sighs> Alka-Seltzer Plus. The fizz works fast. Eddie Murphy. I just said hi. Come on. Richard Pryor. I know, but you got a way of saying hi. Is that all you got? <laughs> Harlem Nights. Rated R. Starts Friday, November 17th.
MTV had asked me to set that up, and it's an award entitled Rate the 80s, Eddie for comedy, Michael for video, and you all voted, so uh, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah, I'm, I was I'm, shocked that Michael came You know, like, I, I'm in this business, but that's one yeah, person, when he's around, I'm yeah, still I like, know what to say now. It's like, you, know, you want to go home now. It's like, yeah. the show is over. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Michael left, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> don't y'all feel like that? Don't you feel like right now you, you know should be going towards the exit? You know what's interesting? <laughs> it was like when he first came out, y'all was didn't quite, but y'all was like, that's a looking like that. <laughs> yeah. And then when he got right about this one, hey, that ain't no look alike. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I'm still like, you know. I'm still shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he came by. That was, that was very nice. People say you sound like Michael when you sing. I don't sound like Michael at you all. You do sound a little bit like Michael. Right? No, I don't. <laughs> no. no. I think you're a little. There's a little Michael-esque in. <laughs> no. In I have. A, I sing a little high, but they try to put. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> they got to put you somewhere. You know, I had somebody, someone listen to my music and they go, it sounds like a mixture of Prince and Michael and this and that. And I say, well, you, it, that's me then, you mix up. <laughs> sounds like seven or eight different people. <laughs> yeah. You just built a studio in your house, man. Have you had a chance to work in it? Uh, no, we just been like feeling the studio out and cutting some demos and stuff down there. Yeah, so you didn't get a chance to do anything in that studio that's on this no, album? No, That's why my record, I got to get more into my music because uh, I put this studio in the house and if if I can't if, <laughs> it's like a big wasted studio down there I, mean, I know you'll be like why do you have this studio down there I mean, <laughs> no one buys your records <laughs> <laughs> but his studio is bad and it's underground and everything is real cool um you think you'll ever do any more ventriloquism <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing alone again uh, <laughs> No, you were a ventriloquist at one time. I was not a ventriloquist. You were, man. You, I, I need to stop. I was not a ventriloquist. <laughs> I think most entertainers, when they go into show business, they don't know what they want to do, and they dabble with different forms of expression. <laughs> now, I didn't know I wanted to be a comedian, and I told my mother I wanted a ventriloquist dummy. And I, have a vent I had a ventriloquist <laughs> dummy named Willie, and I don't want to talk anymore about it. <laughs> Because he was a cheap dummy. His eyes didn't move. And <laughs> oh, God. But you were a magician, so everybody yeah. starts the and great then... Arsenio. <laughs> you can dust him. Who is your... With them long-ass fingers. Um. His fingers are so long, the dove will disappear, and people go, he got some long-ass fingers. <laughs> It's probably behind one of them fingers. <laughs> uh, uh, stick out your finger. They got E.T. finger. <laughs> you got a long finger. Girls be going like, I think you got long fingers. Does that mean something when you have a long finger? <laughs> does it? It does? I want to ask Dr. Ruth. It Ruth means it. you have big gloves. That's all it means. It don't, it don't mean nothing. Dr. Ruth is Dr. Ruth is something else, ain't she? She's wild. She told me, I said, is there a question I can ask Eddie? If you had him on your show, what would you ask him? She says, ask him what kind of lover he is. And I said, I don't think that's a good question for me. <laughs> I, I have my good nights and my bad nights. I have my nights when I want to shoot off a flare, and I have my nights when I write a, a, an apologetic letter afterwards. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just don't know what happened this evening. <laughs> oh, gosh. Are you in love right now? Uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Isn't that touching? <gasps> but I didn't say with what or who. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Good afternoon, Dad. Keep your hands off the fender. Did you read Chevron Supreme has high octane and tecrolene? Yeah, is that right? Maybe I could go fill it up. Just to the gas station. For even better.
better performance, new Chevron Supreme has 25% more Tecrolene. No gasoline's better. Three hours. Gee, Dad, you didn't want me to mix the old gas with the new gas, did you? Chevron, we're with you all the way. The critics are cheering about Look Who's Talking. Oh, really? Bruce Willis's delivery is absolutely perfect. Oh, no! Who are you? It's riotous. Somebody burn me before I blow up! No! Delightful. Oh, yeah. She's gone. Yeah. Yeah, right back at you, babe. And one of the biggest hits of the season. These things come in different sizes? Look Who's Talking. Now that's entertainment. Rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. Advanced Formula Centrum, a high-potency multivitamin multimineral formula with beta-carotene. Centrum more complete from A to Z. The Fry Daddy Deep Fryer, the family-sized easy fryer. Easy to use, easy to clean, easy to store. The Fry Daddy Deep Fryer from Presto. Armatron, America's watch for superb quality design and value. Incredibly priced, tough, rugged, all sport. Armatron, the hottest fashion look for your wrist. Barra Slacks with the exclusive Process 2000 cotton and wool blend slacks that are virtually wrinkle-free with little or no ironing. Barra Process 2000. Hotel accommodations arranged by Best Western, the world's largest lodging chain. For reservations at any of the 1900 Best Western hotels, motor rents, and resorts in the USA and Canada, call toll-free.